All right. What's your name? Abraham Lincoln. Uh, that's L-I-N-C-O-L-N. I know how to spell Lincoln. What's your birthday, Mr. Lincoln? February 12th, 1809. February 12th, 2009 is the 200th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birth. And to celebrate that important bicentenary, we'll be looking at 10 movies and TV shows that indicate the range and the power of Lincoln's hold on American history and the popular imagination. Gentlemen and fellow citizens, I presume you all know who I am. I'm plain Abraham Lincoln. Young Mr. Lincoln, directed by John Ford, starred Henry Fonda, as the Illinois backwoodsman enthralled by the study of law. Reckon you can read it, sir? I expect I could make head or tails out of it. I set my mind to it. Law. In a few short years, he rose from anonymity to the presidency and was immediately faced with the Civil War, a grave challenge for our nation, an endlessly fascinating subject for our movies. D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation was the movie's first true blockbuster in 1915. And though its depiction of blacks was savage cartoonery, the film treated Lincoln as judicious and forgiving. Thank you, gentlemen. I will shoulder all responsibility. Movies portray Lincoln's many presidential roles. In D.W. Griffith's first talkie, Abraham Lincoln, Walter Houston, plays Lincoln the politician, preparing his cabinet for war. I am a man of peace, but the Union shall be preserved. Lincoln, of course, was also commander-in-chief of the North in the Civil War. Here's Hal Holbrook on the battlefield in North and South, a miniseries so long I think it still hasn't ended. I'm afraid you won't be very popular in some quarters, Mr. President. I've never been very popular in some quarters, Sam. <laughs> Lincoln was also America's spiritual leader, lifting his embattled country with eloquent speeches. Here's Sam Waterston in the TV special Gore Vidal's Lincoln, with Abe rehearsing the Gettysburg Address. Note how Waterston manages to channel both Jack Nicholson and Mr. Rogers. And that the nation shall, under God, have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. That after Mr. Everett, I imagine, will fall on them like a wet blanket. Just before the president began to speak, the clouds parted, flooding the stand with brilliant sunlight. On March 4th, 1865, as the war was ending and a nation's wounds needed binding, Lincoln gave his greatest speech, the second inaugural address. With malice towards none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. To do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. He lived just another 40 days. On April 14th, a week after the Confederacy surrendered, he and Mrs. Lincoln visited Ford's Theater, where national tragedy would be on the bill. Lincoln's assassination has fueled many movies, including the recent National Treasure Book of Secrets. Sick, Semper, Tyrannus! But for the real story, return to Ken Burns's The Civil War. For a long moment, the theater was still. Then Mary Lincoln screamed. The bullet from Booth's pistol had entered the back of Lincoln's head, torn through his brain, and lodged behind his right eye. A surgeon from the audience pronounced the wound mortal. 
At 7.22 on the morning of April 15, 1865, Abraham Lincoln died. He was 56 years old. Secretary of War Edwin Stanton said, Now he belongs to the ages. The age of movies and TV, that is. We had a dancing Lincoln and a dancing Washington, keeping time with Ray Bolger in April in Paris. And a cyber Lincoln, clouding and clearing the minds of the Enterprise crew on the third to last episode of the original Star Trek series, where Lincoln, Kirk, and Spock are the mind prisoners of a man-sized rock with blinking headlights. Somehow Abe keeps his dignity amid the sci-fi foolery. During the four bloodiest years of my country's history, I gave orders that sent a hundred thousand men to their death at the hands of their brothers. There's no honorable way to kill. No gentle way to destroy. There's nothing good in war except its ending. Four score and seven minutes ago, we, your forefathers, were brought forth upon a most excellent adventure. In all, Abraham Lincoln has been put on screen hundreds of times an inspiration to movie heroes from Jimmy Stewart's Mr. Smith to those excellent stoners Bill and Ted. Let's give them and Mr. Lincoln the last word. These two great gentlemen are dedicated to a proposition which was true in my time, just as it's true today. Be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes! This is Richard Corliss of Time Magazine.